I've had this uh, HP 4195 network analyzer for a while. Uh, last time it was in here, uh, the problem was with the backup battery preventing the unit from booting. Um, I haven't used it much since, and I finally uh, decided to take care of some some issues like the battery. So what I did was I got a 2.4 volt uh, NIMH cell. 80 milliamp hours, so it's pretty similar to the original ones, but the physical size is completely incomp incompatible. So I 3D printed these two caps so it would sit proper flatly on the PCB and with some notches so I can tie wrap it tight. Um, the other thing I wanted to address was these good old Rifa caps. Unfortunately, for the big one. Uh, with the pin spacing they have, I, I didn't have any choice, I had to put a new reefer back, but I'm counting on the fact that they probably improved their um, their plastic um, composition, or in any case it can be much worse than these, and these lasted for 25 years, so I'm okay with that. The smaller ones I replaced with film caps like this, so these these should be good for a while. And here's the A6 board. Uh, it happens the one to be the one with the most uh, ROM ICs. So I pull all those and dump them. These are the two uh, backup RAMs. And here's my installed backup battery. It's not great. Uh, the tie wrap extends a bit higher than I, than I would have hoped. But I'm pretty sure it's going to work for a long while. I've considered um, putting a lithium battery but I didn't like the idea of having needing to have a BMS there and to protect it against over discharge and overcharge. It would have required a lot of mods on the PCB, which I didn't really like. Whereas a nickel-based battery, well, the only risk is leakage, and I think I think I prefer dealing with a bit of leakage than fire or an explosion in this kind of instrument. Okay, so just for a simple setup, I have. Uh, channel 1 set up with a power splitter and I will be measuring this attenuator which is supposed to be a 10 dB attenuator. First I need to get a flat, oops, yeah, overload on R1 input, yeah that's my bad. Before I hook anything up I need to check the attenuators. So it says range, R and T should be able to go up to 0 dB and S1 is configured to generate 0 dB. What I found is it's pretty sensitive, close to 0 Hz for some reason. I'm not sure if this is normal or if something's wrong with the calibration, so I'll just uh, generate a slightly lower amplitude, minus 10, and that should be okay. Okay, network mode, that's what we want. Format, yes. Calibration, I'll come back to that. This is okay, scale, auto scale. So we're measuring in the 70 milliDB area, which is about what I'd expect. Now let's get a uh, zero reference from this. Calibration, I think I want the transmission. Normalize through, yes. Oh, so before I do this, I'm currently sweeping from 0 0.001 hertz to 500 megahertz. My my splitter is only good from 20 megahertz, so I'll just change the start. Let's do it from 10. Okay, transmission through. Yes, go. Okay, so it saved. A calibration, so I should be able to enable it now. And then, if I do, for some reason, when you calibrate it, it uh, goes to uh, manual trigger mode, so you need to trigger it once. I just sweeped here, and here's what's me measuring now. I have, let me just do that. auto scale. Yeah, I mean, it's this is just measuring noise basically. A couple milli decibels, that's nothing. I'll hook up the 
attenuator. So it's way off, I'll just auto scale again. Okay. It looks bad, but it actually it's pretty good because the reference is at minus 9.94 for the top and 20 milli dB per per division. So it's starting at minus 9.97, and the f it's flat within what is that? 0.1 dB? Not even that. I think this is well within spec. Actually, I don't have the specs for the attenuator, but this looks as good as we could hope. And the phase is minus 15 degrees at 500 megahertz. I this whole instrument is beyond my my level of RF knowledge, but I think this linear slope on the phase I think could be due just to the electrical length that was added by the attenuator. But eh, not sure about any of what I'm saying here. Um, I ran this on both channels, so they both work pretty well. And the next things I'm going to do uh, off camera is just check the uh, the flatness with my RF power meter, and uh, I'll try my uh, um, directional coupler too. And I actually have a dummy load I wanted to test, so I think I'll try and hook that up too next.